How is it about popping it's D about to react to this vid by Publish X? This is the full story of Tay K documentary. Okay, I reacted to videos about him here and there, but they've only, you know, scratched the surface, basically briefly talked about, you know, what he did, who he murdered or whatever the case. But I guess we're gonna get the full story and see why he, he was so messed up. Uh, let's watch. Tay K has been in prison for the last six years out of Damn. a 55 year sentence given to him by a jury. Prior to this, he, he was on house arrest for eight months when suddenly he sent out a tweet stating he had enough. He and his best friend cut off their ankle monitors and said they were going on the run. And if police wanted them, they were gonna have to come find them. It would take US Marshals a three month nationwide search when they eventually hey. apprehended him on the other side of the he country. Was on with TK taunting them every step of the way. I mean, I'm not <laughs> I'm not condoning any of this. I'm not saying that that's a, it's not admirable or anything like that, but it is uh, impressive only because the the things that I've seen about people going on the run, like they get caught very quickly. So three months is wild. And given that he, he was so young. Eventually on June 30th, 2017, he was captured, but he had one more trick up his sleeve to show the world. Just hours after his arrest, the music video to his song titled The Race was published on a YouTube channel. After social media got a hold of it, there was no going back. Almost overnight, TK would have a viral hit on his hands. People were now tuning into this story of a 17-year-old kid who ran from the police, made songs about it, and you couldn't even help but watch it. But nobody at the time knew the severity of his crimes. The blood of two innocent people had been shed. Black and tired. I thought he killed an old man. Am I tripping? As a judge announced his 55-year prison the sentence story. for the murder of Ethan Walker. Now at 22 years old, he says he never had the chance to be an adult. One of his co-defendants, who was a white female, only got 10 years of probation. But Take was ultimately sentenced to 55 years in prison for just one of the murders. This led to him stating if he was white, he wouldn't have received such a harsh punishment. All he wants is a second chance. You got the world going crazy right now? I heard something about it. Tamor McIntyre was born June 16, 2000 in Long Beach, California. Really? In Crips territory. Both of his oh, parents were gang members, and even though his dad was always in and out of prison, his mom was still active with the baby in St. Cribs while raising the two kids, him and his sister Damn, Kayla. But things really took a turn for the worse when his dad was doing a seven-year run in prison for a deal gone bad in 2002. Without a father figure around, it was hard for him to find guidance. Eventually, their mom was unable to raise them, and they soon found themselves in the foster care system. Bouncing around from different families who ultimately didn't want them. Been in foster care since we were like really young, like damn near all our life. This is, this we is never cool. stayed with our parents. We kind of stayed in different foster homes, bouncing around. This was him and his sister's childhood as they stayed in the foster care system. <clears throat> and they said they never really experienced Christmas as a kid. Eventually, his mom did escape the gang life and she relocated the family about four hours away to Las Vegas. They ended up only spending about a year oh, there wow, until 2009. And that's because his dad was released after serving his seven years. Drive. I get there Being too. forced to Texas was the last thing they wanted, but Tamor was enrolled in elementary school and then eventually middle school. Still, he and his sister felt trapped with their dad, who by now had started to abuse them badly for the smallest things. He didn't want to think about it and he wanted to be anywhere else but home, so he stayed at friends' houses as much as he could. Now the streets welcomed him and he welcomed the streets. Bitch, I'm 15 and I don't fuck with 12. All you niggas mark us up. In 2014, he was a freshman at Martin High School, but most of his time was spent freestyling with his friends. They called themselves the Daytona Boys. They were rowdy and loud and would rap and smoke weed whether they went to school that day or ditched. Three people made up the Daytona Boys, Eric Johnson or Santana Sage, Jalen Bell or Pimps, yeah, and Tamor, who now rapped as TK47. In addition, they had a manager named Ezra who was important to the team and handled everything behind the scenes. To them, Daytona Boys was a brotherhood, and the group knew they had something special. So they figured, why not start uploading on SoundCloud? But even with music in his life, he just couldn't stay out of trouble. This old tweet shows a letter of him being expelled from high school after he brought marijuana on grounds. He didn't want to go back to school, and he couldn't go back home, so nothing really mattered. Tiki would often sleep over Pimp's house at night, and after being kicked out of high school, they only grew closer. He was on his own at 15 years old. Now, his full attention was on his music and social media, pushing the Daytona boys as much as he could. 
being seen in interviews before anyone even knew who they were. Second 47 from Daytona Boys. Pimpy's from Daytona Boys. Shout out to my nigga And with their manager's help, they were even booking shows. Mm. After their shows would run into 2 a.m. and in the night, they were in the streets doing what they believed they had to do. Robbing, stealing, and toting guns. And anyone who got in their way would learn with death. <laughs> On December 31st, 2015, the Daytona Boys were at a New Year's show in Arlington and finished around 2 a.m. Santana Sage was the only one with a car and he always drove everyone around, with TK and Pimps in the front and back. They left and pulled up to a stoplight when another vehicle pulled alongside them. From here forward, it's unsure what exactly happened next. But we do know that Santana Sage fired a gun into the other vehicle, killing a 21-year-old college student, Sarah mm. Mushlinger, in cold blood, driving off with TK and Pimps as the passengers. He was later arrested after police used his Twitter account to match the vehicle. It was a series of Twitter posts that they say led, um, led them to Johnson all the way from this New Year's Eve party that they say he attended. His defense was that the Daytona boys were being called racial slurs by the other car, and that provoked Santana, but he only meant to scare them with the gunshots. But it didn't matter. An innocent girl was dead, and her parents were left to wonder why. We'll be okay. TK and Pimps, however, were both minors and faced no charges. Their names weren't even mentioned in court. When you can just walk away from something that big, it makes you feel invincible. After a six-month trial, a jury only took three hours to find Santana Sage guilty and gave him 44 years in prison. We, the jury, find the defendant, Eric Jamal Johnson, guilty of the offense of murder. Take was still only 15 years old at that time. He had no money, nowhere to live, and was not legally allowed to work. He needed a way to survive, and he had to do something. <laughs> On July 26, 2016, TK, Pimps, and five others would formulate a plan. Sean Robinson, Latharian Merritt, Ariana Barrett, Megan Holtz, and a oh, minor yeah, named Mia. Together, they made a plan to rob Mia's boyfriend, 17-year-old Zachary Bellet, while he was inside of his home. Their plan would mm -hmm. go like this. Zachary and his roommate Ethan were staying at a house located on the 1500 block of Mansfield, Texas. TK and the six others met in an apartment where they gathered weapons and talked over the plan. Pimps got brass knuckles and two of the men grabbed guns. TK was unarmed and says he told the group to have his back in case anything went down. Mia and her two friends Ariana and Megan left to Zachary's house around 5 p.m. They made it seem as if they just wanted to smoke and hang out. But what Zachary didn't know was that TK, Pimps, Sean, and Latharian were waiting down the street in a car for a text message. It seemed simple enough, but that night their plans quickly fell apart. That's crazy, because she the one who said when the her three boyfriend girls arrived, up, they were surprised to see there was a no lot more people on. in the home than they expected. And this pushed their plans back by hours. But they couldn't wait forever. 10 p.m. was approaching. TK and the others became impatient as well, feeling like it was now or never. The girls decided to go ahead with their plan and made their way to the door to unlock it when no one was looking. Four men burst into the home, two of them armed with guns. Sean held Zachary at gunpoint and Latharian held Ethan Walker at gunpoint, with TK and Pimps still looking for anything of value, but they came short of what they were promised. The next few minutes happened fast, but when they hesitated, Latharian panicked and without even remember doing it, he shot Ethan Walker in the stomach, killing him. Sean would panic at the same time after hearing the first shot go off, and he would shoot Zachary, striking him in his shoulder, but only injuring him. They knew they messed up, and it was only a matter of time of when they got caught. In this now famous video that shows TK crying during his interrogation, prosecutors and investigators were trying to figure out what exactly happened that night. He finally broke down and admitted to robbing, but he says he never shot or knew that anyone would be killed. Fuit 6 video of teen rapper TK as police questioned him about his role in a deadly home invasion in Mansfield. He had just turned 16 years old and was being held in juvenile detention for two weeks until an adult could pick him up. His sister Kayla had just bought her apartment after saving up for months and could now be his guardian since she turned 18. I had got my apartment, like I said, we didn't have a lot of family like that. In Kimbo, you get released. Juveniles get released. They, at some point, they're gonna get released. You know, so like, he got released to me. I had my apartment, I was 18. 
He was officially released by a juvenile court judge only if he agreed to wear a constant surveillance ankle monitor. Pimps was also released on house arrest and stayed close with TK, where they would talk online every night. Police kept Kayla's apartment on constant surveillance and pulled over anyone who left their building. TK spent most of his time online, tweeting out things like this, asking his friends to come over and record since he was on house arrest. Releasing only a few songs on SoundCloud at the time, he was saving the rest for something else. The world hadn't really heard of TK's name yet, but he saw a marketing opportunity where nobody else did. From July of 2016 all the way to March of 2017, almost eight months, he stayed locked in his room thinking about his next move. The stress was getting to him. Although only 16, he was looking to be charged as an adult. He had no lawyer, no money, and didn't know what was going to happen to him. Then he had an idea. On Sunday, March 26, 2017, late into the night, Tekke would post this now in his tweet saying he was done with house arrest and social media would spread it around. He called pimps and the two made a plan. They would both cut their ankle monitors off and make it clear to the world that this was all a game to them. And if police wanted them, they were going to have to play hide and seek. They needed to get out of town and their first stop would be three hours away in San Antonio, where they laid low for a few weeks. Tekke had no regard for being wanted. He was spotted by fans at malls or even ordering food at local spots. Pimps had been messaging a photographer for a few days named Mark Salvador, who lived around the San Antonio area, and they were planning to meet up to take pictures. But in reality, TK and Pimps needed money, and they planned to rob an innocent man of his camera equipment. They planned to meet around 5 p.m. near an empty parking garage. Mark would show up and hop into the car to smoke, and when he got inside, they would take everything he had and then forcefully kick him out of the vehicle. But when this went down, things didn't go according to plan. Again. Mark began yelling as loud as he could for help, and he ran toward the street. They sped up after him, trying to run him over, but he landed on the hood and held on as they drove off. They had to pull into a Chick-fil-A parking lot nearby to get him off. When the car stopped, Mark got up, stomped on the windshield as hard as he could, breaking it. This agitated Teike, and he allegedly leaned out the window and shot him, flinging his body onto the ground and leaving him there to die unknowing that this was all captured by a nearby surveillance. Now only one thing mattered to TK and Pimps. They had the camera equipment and a little bit of money to get to their next stop, but they needed to stop by home in Arlington first. By now, San Antonio police had already tied TK and Pimps to the murder of Mark from last month at Chick-fil-A. Realizing they needed to leave immediately, they planned to go on a 23-hour car ride to New Jersey, where they knew a few people and a place to stay. Any money they had left would be used just to get there, and they needed every dollar. He even had someone willing to do a music video for free if he went to Jersey. By now, it was early June. Police were receiving tips on his whereabouts, posting wanted posters in areas they believed the two to be. Of course, TK only saw this as another marketing opportunity and decided to make a song about his race from the police. He saw it as a marketing opportunity. He saw it as a marketing opportunity, you know what he did? Create a song called The Race. I'm the TK, yeah. He's running around, he's showing the, you know, they got my face on this, whatever, whatever. Poke fun at the whole process of people actually looking for me. It was perfect timing, and to make it better, he wanted to release the song on his birthday. Those following his SoundCloud and Twitter were the first to hear the song, but there was no video just yet. TK, along with the help of a cameraman, would film the music video to the race the following day, and he didn't charge him a penny for it. It would only take about a day to edit the video, but it was ready whenever TK was. The two spent their last weeks of freedom hiding and eluding the law in New Jersey. Marshals could tell they were getting close to capturing him, and at this point, it was simply a matter of when. Exactly two weeks after his birthday, both were eventually apprehended in a New Jersey home. A total of three months spanning 96 days, and the race had finally ended June 30th, 2017. But TK still had one more trick up his sleeve, and he wanted the whole world to know his story before he went down. Just two hours after he was arrested, the music video to the race was uploaded to YouTube. The story of the shooter kid who ran from the U.S. Marshals and filmed a music video while doing it. I want to watch People the video. were instantly yeah. engaged, and social media pushed it to every corner of the internet. People couldn't help but tune into the song as it was getting hundreds of thousands of views every day, showing no signs of slowing down. Some of the first remixes and endorsements by other rappers showed up, and the hashtag #FreeTK was being posted. 
but no. nobody really acknowledged what he was now no, facing. He definitely now did. law enforcement wanted to make an example out of TK, and Texas shows no mercy for the crime of murder. A month after being arrested, a judge ruled to sentence him as an adult at 17 years old. But in the outside world, the race had gotten almost 20 million views by now, and some record labels were taking notice. He would still sign a deal amid two murder charges. Using all of his past songs, they released a project titled Santana World, with the race headlining the project, and of course, it was very successful. Over the course of the next six months, the race would accumulate over 100 million views, including a remix from 21 Savage and Young Nudie, making him one of the only artists in history to have a massive hit song and never perform it. Yet he still appeared to have high hopes of beating his case and coming out the other side a free man. To him, living in jail was only a temporary thing, and he would soon be out. And now, early into 2018, sentences for the 2016 murder of Ethan Walker began being handed out. The first to go down was Megan Holt, who was sentenced to 20 years in February. The courts recognized her as the mastermind behind the whole thing while Mia, Zach's girlfriend, had been cooperating and working closely with the police, and in exchange, was mm. only given a 10-year oh, probation nice. sentence. Sorry, the dominoes are out taking... That's so fucked up because it was her boyfriend. None of this would have even happened if she didn't participate because it was her boyfriend. Starting to fall. He had already been denied bond, and now the state district judge was upset with the internet support for him. Here's what he said. It's my understanding that people throughout this country have free TK signs up, and this court has a problem with that. Just after his bail was they denied, Latharian Merritt was also sentenced to 40 years after being named the person who shot Ethan Walker and the gunman. Mm -hmm. Later in June, the media reported that TK was being sued by Mark Salvador's parents for $1 million in damages for the Chick-fil-A killing. This is after finding out he had become a superstar since his capture almost a year before. The following month in July, the parents of Ethan Walker and Zachary oh, Below were followed here. suit, seeking an additional $1 million from the profits made off of the race. Mm -hmm. While this is happening, Adam-22 was able to get an exclusive 10-minute phone interview from jail where TK would tell the world he was going to be out soon. That's crazy to think about, that you probably would have already seen the world right now if you, if you weren't locked up. Like, there's crazy amount of opportunities to be available to you right now. But if he didn't actually kill people and he wasn't on the run, then he would have never had this song. So, yeah. But during this interview, he also made a huge mistake by admitting he had an iPad in his jail cell. I, I got a, I got a tablet. I got an iPad. I'm listening to music in the Just days later, he would have a shakedown where the iPad was found. With Adam later even stating he felt guilty for it happening. The management did not ask me to remove the part where he talked about having an iPad. And so then he gets in solitary, all kinds of whatever additional charges because he had an iPad and he's just in jail using the iPad. By August, Tiki transferred from the Tarrant County Jail in Texas to a maximum security Long Evans Correction Center, mm -hmm. being put into a solitary confinement cell for 23 hours a day. But he never lost his positive optimism and he posted a picture of himself on Twitter. The caption read, live from the gates of hell. <laughs> The murder charges for Ethan Walker were coming to a close, and another sentence was handed to Ariana Barrett for aggravated robbery. In exchange for her testifying against the remaining three men, she was only given 25 years. Oh. A week after that, Sean Robinson was given 40 years for the murder. Pimps and Tiki were still left waiting for their sentence, both indicted for a second murder charge of Mark Salvador. Pimps was even offered a deal to testify against TK, but he never turned his back. To him, it was still a brotherhood there, and loyalty was forever. But in November of 2018, Pimps would pay the ultimate price for his crimes, pleading guilty to two counts of aggravated robbery of Ethan Walker and Mark Salvador, being given 30 years. Just like that, TK's best friend was gone. Now he was the final man standing, and the world wanted to know what was going to happen to him. Damn, but no one like as much as he fun, wanted dude. to know. The jury deliberated for a little longer than three hours today here before deciding on that 55-year sentence. That song... In July of that really irritated them. His trial finally began. Three years of evidence and testimonies being gathered, and prosecutors had a strong case. He pleaded guilty for aggravated robbery, but not the murder. His defense argued that he was a minor who played the least significant role, but it was apparent the jury had already heard enough. 
the lyrics for the race were legally being used against him, and they even stated that he thrived off the violence and showed no remorse for his actions. His trial only lasted one week, and by that Friday, the jury unanimously decided that he was guilty. Tamor says he was only 16 and misguided at the time when this all happened, claiming he was never given a chance to be an adult. His misguided childhood is sad, but should never be used as an excuse for exactly. taking the lives of others. Turning 22 years old from behind a cell, Tinke has definitely matured and is more open to talking about his treatment in prison. And he argues the question, is he rightfully owed a second chance to make things right? I don't think so. This is too much. I'm sorry. This is too goddamn much. I did not know all of these details. This is a lot. And you're responsible for multiple people dying. You participated in all this nonsense. You were a menace for several years. You, you making this song mocking the police, making fun of the fact that you killed these people, no remorse whatsoever, you dancing in the video while niggas have died at the hands of, of, of your bullshit. So I don't, I don't feel sorry for him to be honest. This is, this is too much. Child or not, you know right from wrong and this is terrible. This is, this is wrong. So there's that. It's interesting though, I did not know that this was that long ago. For some reason in my head, I'm thinking, oh, this is like two years ago. So I'm like, oh, I didn't even know he was sentenced uh this many years did i say it in the video or not i don't recall but um yeah this was fucking five years ago he said six but he said 2018 maybe it was six years ago since the murders happened did this happen 2017 anyway um yeah this is a lot this is crazy but this was an interesting story y'all let me know what y'all think let me know what other videos you want to watch and i'll see y'all the next time Bye.